Mm. Mm. Mm hmm This is really good. You like your Only, choice? Hmm? I marshmallowed my foot. That's terrible. I love these shoes. The shoes are nice. Thank you. Really nice. It matches the, the flannel. Mm -hmm. Sure. Everybody, I'm James Palmer at Sun Outdoors San Diego Bay with soccer superstar and legend Carly Lloyd. And this is Campfire Combos. So I'm a Philly guy. You're a Jersey girl. Can we talk about how it is free for me to go over the Ben Franklin into New Jersey, but you have to pay to get back into the great state of Pennsylvania. The what great state? <laughs> I don't know about that. I know, isn't that such an odd thing? Yeah. What is it that you love about New Jersey? Is it that you can't pump your own gas? Is it that you can't make a left? What's the You know, I think I, I actually kind of like being in control, so yeah. I'd rather pump my own gas. <laughs> Although in the winters, not so much. It's kind of nice. You'd rather stay in your heated car. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. You no. know, uh, the first time I got my license, I drove over the bridge, mm -hmm. one of the bridges. Yeah. And uh, I stopped, had to stop at a gas station in, in, you know, near near Pencil, like Philadelphia, outside okay. the stadium. I'm just sitting there, and I'm sitting there, <laughs> just waiting. I'm just like, <laughs> why aren't they coming to? <laughs> This state, Ask what's wrong me, with them? Fill it up regular, so you yeah. know, and uh, yeah, no, just, you know. <laughs> now, I'm just gonna come out of the gate hot right now. Your guys' run that you were on for that period of time, greatest team in American sports history, can we say that? I think so, right? Yeah, dynasty. I think, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think there were, yeah, there were pockets of of dynasty, yeah, yeah, but I would say so. Okay, so you score all these big goals. We know all about this. So I'm curious, working in sports, some people just have like a nose for the goal, right? Or just a knack for the big moment. Was that ingrained in you? I would say that there's not a lot of athletes that obviously have that, mm -hmm. that knack for just kind of coming up big in big moments. Um, I, I go back to my childhood and, you know, I was a typical tomboy growing okay. up, played any and all sports. But I always, like, if I couldn't do something well or good enough the first, second time, like, I would just keep trying. Okay. And I always wanted to try to figure it out and, like, get better at it. Yeah. So I think that that kind of just translated into my youth career where I just wasn't, I wasn't afraid to make a mistake or fail. Mm-hmm. I think you build that foundation okay. at a younger age, but then I think as you evolve, you know, your preparation and, and all of that. But I was, you know, since high school, I just, yeah, I always showed up in those big moments. Yeah. It was like, I just, I went to another gear. Another That's what I was years. wondering, because like when I talk to guys about it, it's always yeah. like, I don't know, the, the, the ones that are good at it in every sport, it's like, things slow down for them in those moments. There's no panic, there's no, it, there's a moment of clarity that comes in those moments. Yeah, I think there's two types of people, like the ones that, that thrive under pressure and then the ones that kind of like either crumble or just kind of get lost yeah. and or just, or just there. Yeah, the ones that ask the questions to people that thrive in the Yeah, and they look to moments. those players, yeah. yeah. I, I just, yeah, I think that that was my roots too, growing mm -hmm. up in New Jersey, you know, being just outside of Philadelphia. Right. It's just, a, it's an Birthplace under. Birthplace America. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the second best place, I think. <laughs> Jersey's first. I understand, <laughs> I get it. But it's just that underdog mentality. And, um, you know, just always, I always had that chip on my shoulder, proving mm -hmm. people wrong. Yeah, but when you score like three goals in 16 minutes, is there another gear to that? Is there like an unconscious, I'm in the zone, you know, like Kobe can't miss or Michael can't miss? Yeah, I, I would say it's kind of that flow state. Okay. And it's it's sort of hard to get there, but you actually, I and I actually thought less in the flow state. Like, I, it was oh, just okay. as if yeah. I was playing in the park with my friends. It's just happening. It's like, just, you're in that moment. There's nothing else that's like penetrating through your mind, but what's going on right in that moment. So I, I'm, I'm curious, because everybody calls it maybe one of the greatest goals in 
American soccer history when you drill one from midfield. It, it, if you didn't score two goals prior to that, are you still taking that shot? Or we're like, we're talking in the zone, we're in this spot where it's like, probably things are seen a little bit clearer. It's a good just question. You're... Yeah, no, you know, no one's ever asked me that question. That's why you're um, here, Carly. That's why you're here. Look at that, look at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be. I mean, I think, like, I just wanted to win that game so, so bad. Mm -hmm. And I was willing to do whatever it took. And I just was in such a good mental mindset. I think when you're in those, like, moments, you, Things, things that are just seem impossible just end up possible. Possible. Because we saw it. It happened. And I, yeah, I mean, thank gosh it actually went in. It would have been <laughs> a complete fail if yeah. it didn't. But yeah, it's just, you know, you never know when things are going to happen. And that's why I always, again, revert back to my childhood. I wasn't, I was not afraid to try things. Mm -hmm. And I was not afraid to do the impossible. And I think that that's what makes great's great because mm -hmm. they're just willing to to just try something and you never know when it's going to be pulled off. You're, you're you're no longer playing professional soccer. So I'm I what are your thoughts on like maybe we stuff our faces with some junk food? You know, I You don't have a choice, we're going to do it. Yeah, I uh I've been relaxed. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. And they got in, and they decided to come right for my head. The second night, all of a sudden, we wake up to this, like, loud, boot, like, bang. We're like, my Gunshot. brother Go. fell out of the bed. <laughs> like, literally fell right onto his knees. Alcohol involved in this? No. Really? No, nope, he just must have been dreaming about rolling over or doing something. And then what my is... parents had the king-size bed in the back. Well, of course they did. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's what happens when you're a senior citizen. You got back issues and stuff you got to take care of. I'll tell you what, that what was What was your pretty... favorite part of the trip? Just driving from site to site. I mean, we saw... It's just, it's just amazing how many beautiful parts of the country there are. I mean, mm -hmm. there's just so many. We flew into Rapid City in South Dakota. We toured all through South Dakota. Then we went to my, uh, Wyoming. Um, and then we went to Montana. So we spent mm. two weeks in an RV and then, a, like, about nine nights in Montana. Um, but it was just, you know, nature. It was hikes. It was driving around. I felt like I was going to die in the RV at times because you would literally look over. That's always fun. And uh -huh. there was a couple thousand foot cliff. Whoa. Literally. I mean, the, the parts that we were driving through was pretty amazing. Was anybody's mom, you're driving, somebody driving, is she hands over the face? I can't watch in that instance, or is that you? I had sweaty hands, feet. Oh, that was like me. My husband drove the whole trip. He's the only person that drove? Mm-hmm. Was that his choice? He he drove, I mean, he grew up kind of driving his RV that Truck his family had. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And, you know, it's a big RV to drive. Yeah. He felt like he was in control, though. I'm going to show these in-laws mm -hmm. where we're headed. He was a very good driver. That's what I would have done. This is the best s'more I've ever is had. It is it tremendous? Yeah. Hands down. Pretty good. When you were playing, did you ever even have a three-week period where you didn't have something scheduled? No. Right? Oh. 2020, COVID. Oh. Well, Everybody did. Not a whole lot of us had anything no. on our docket other than a puzzle or two. This is like, do you enjoy this aspect? Do you still think about soccer? Um. Or is what we're yeah. doing right now like... Let's do this. Let's yeah, RV across like, the country. I just feel I just feel a little bit more relaxed. Like I feel like I'm able to just now live life. Like it sounds pretty crazy because well I just had you know 17 amazing years. But you know I'd be sitting here thinking about okay I got to train tomorrow. I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh I'm gonna have a marshmallow. I'm gonna have you know some chocolate bars. It's almost like that guilt. You feel. Yeah. No guilt so now. So I couldn't, I couldn't relax. Hey, so. no guilt now. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Just ready? getting it in every direction. Love it. How about some rapid fire questions? You ready for those? Let's do it. Let's bring it. Glamper or camper? Because we just got done doing a pretty good glamp. I'm going to say camper. OK, love it. World Cup or Olympics? Oh, oh I can't, oh, I cannot choose. Oh, oh, oh. Both. Both, yep. OK. What is the best soccer movie of all time? There's been some really cheesy ones. I don't really bad. Are you a big yeah, Ladybugs fan? I, uh, the big green? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe Ben like, like Beckham, Beckham is better. Okay. I like it's better than all of this. Hardest fans to play in front of? Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I would probably say Mexico or Brazil. OK, love it. Bon Jovi or Bruce Springsteen? Bruce Springsteen, oh. Jersey. Oh, for it. Greatest Olympian of all time, you can't say yourself. Oh, well, um, <laughs> <laughs> greatest Olympian. You know, I mean, Michael Phelps has got like be. 65 gold medals. It's got to be Michael Phelps. It's got to be. Most difficult aspect of being a world-class athlete that nobody knows about. What's the hardest thing that everybody goes, well, I didn't know she has to do that? I would say the hardest thing is there's not a whole lot of people you can trust. And mm. so your circle is very tight. Mm -hmm. And every time somebody comes up to me, I'm always kind of like, What's your angle? What's your angle and what do you want? <laughs> yes. And it's just a, it just sucks having to be like that. It does. But it's for the reality. God, I'd be terrible. I'm so trustworthy. <laughs> I trust everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you keep a list of insults in your notes, right? You've kept insults, you've kept lists. What's the number one in your mind where you go, Oh, that one cuts to the core of me? Carly Lloyd. 
what's that? I would say complicated. Complicated. Complicated? You're yeah. not complicated. I'm not, no. I just know what I want and what I need to do to be the, be the best. You haven't been complicated today. You've been <laughs> unbelievable. Go to karaoke song. What is oh, it? Oh, gosh. Maybe oh. Living on a Prayer? I don't well, know. Well, we picked I... Springsteen earlier. Wow. Wow, I mean, look no at you. One can replicate Listen, Springsteen. you covered both bases, though. That's yeah. good. I like yeah. that. All right. Was there enough room for Jack on that door at the end of Titanic? Because he only gave it one go to try to get up there with Rose, and then he just mm. fell back in the water. Do you think there was enough room, or did she, she was just too spread out, I think? I think so. Titanic, man, it just gets me Does every it? time. Ugh, the music, it's like so sad. What's your saddest part when the lady just drops the oh, and drops a little yeah. pearl thing in there? Yeah. yeah. Come on, don't waste it's just that. It's heartbreaking. Unbelievable. Heartbreaking. OK, that's the end. Are you ready for really some feet to the fire? Ready. All right, here, let's do this. So one of the things when I knew we were going to be talking kind of really stuck with me the more I kind of thought about it. And there's so few athletes or teams in sport that not only had to try to win at all costs, but at the same time were trying to push something socially forward. Right, you can look at like Muhammad Ali or the eighty like nineteen eighty Olympic hockey team with the Cold War and things. And what you guys were trying to do with equal pay, with moving things forward, but also that could all kind of go up in smoke if you don't win. Yeah. To me, that amount of pressure is just is mind boggling to me to perform in that setting. Oh, hundred percent. But there was always that pressure, but we just wanted to win. Okay. So badly. But in order for us to receive the pay that we essentially kind of deserved, we had to win. Like, there was no other option. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't play for the money, but at some point when you win all the time and you're the number one team in the world and you're, you know, paving the way for the next generations um, to come, you know, we we always kind of went through negotiations and mm -hmm. and and all these different things, coming out of there feeling like, well, we should just accept what we're being given, mm -hmm. and eventually that gets old. You know, eventually, yeah. you're kind of like, okay, um, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, really proud of everybody for. It's really hard. It's really hard to being in a lawsuit with your employer <laughs> and showing up and still having to compete and, and, and do all that. But um, first and foremost, you know, we, we were competing, we were striving to win and, um, you know, definitely making it better for generations to come. So with all of that you, that you kind of were breaking down where, you know, you felt like you had to win, that's also how you're personally wired. We kind of talked a little bit about you feeding off of the type of criticism that you've gotten in your career. Like now that you're no longer playing, that mindset maybe got you to where you're, to where you got, but did it affect you in any capacity? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of time to reflect on my career. I feel like when you're in it, there's no real reflecting. It's mm -hmm. more so just the tunnel vision, you know, numb, not many emotions. You're just literally preparing and planning for what's coming and then after you finish that it's like what's next mm -hmm. what's next did you have fun um, i had fun winning okay i had fun having a goal and every day working towards something mm -hmm. but i can't say that i fully soaked in every moment and really really enjoyed life and my career mm -hmm. as i'm doing now but I do, I look back and I don't think that, I don't think that I could have gotten through all that I gotten through, proved so many people wrong throughout the years and been as successful as I was if I wasn't like that. When I announced my retirement until the day I retired, it was the first time in my career where I actually didn't have tunnel vision. And I looked up into the, the crowd, I read posters that people had made uh, I heard the chants, I heard them screaming my name, and I just soaked it all in. And, you know, I think it just kind of helped me evolve nicely into this retirement phase. This reconnection with your family, you mentioned soccer went before everything mm -hmm. for a very long time. What has this 
time now been with? You're sleeping in an RV together and you're catching up. Is it, is it making up for lost time? Is it just you picked right up? Is it what is going through your mind now that you have this time? From 2008 until pretty much to 2020, um, I hadn't really been speaking to my family. I was speaking to my sister from 2016 on, um, but I just, yeah, we had some, some difficulties along the years and I never knew how much it did affect me and the weight mm -hmm. that I was carrying on my shoulders. Um, I had been working with my personal uh, soccer coach for, for those 17 years. Definitely, you know, helped me along the way. Uh, but there was definitely some, some dark, dark times and some pretty negative things that were kind of done in that situation. And uh, it kept me away from my family. Mm -hmm. And I cut ties with him and then, you know, reconnected with my family. And it was the best reconnection and ending that I could have ever had with my career because it meant the world to me to be able to have my family there by my side at every event. You know, they had missed so many different things along the, the years and it just wrapped up my whole career perfectly. And, um, you know, we've been spending so much time together, holidays, birthdays, just everything, summers, the RV trip, the road mm -hmm. trip that we were just on. And family is, you know, everything. Sometimes yeah. it's hard. Sometimes, you know, they present different challenges um, along the way, but I think that's what people don't realize as professional athletes. You know, mm -hmm. you sacrifice so many different things. And in my case, you know, sacrifice of not talking to my family for so many years. So covering the NFL and I talk to a lot of guys who retire and nothing may fulfill you like the sound, even though you say you've blocked some of it out, but the sound of a crowd after knocking home a game winner to win a World Cup or to win an Olympics. That silence after you retire is difficult for some players to fill that void or they never find a way to fill that void or they're completely comfortable never touching that again. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll never get to feel playing in a World Cup or an Olympics, packed stadium, the pressure, like no, no other environment will ever come close to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm okay with that. I had it for so long and I was able to be a part of an amazing team for so long, but I'm also just Carly. And, and that's how I like to be treated. My identity wasn't tied to being famous and, and getting attention and because I went out on my own terms, because it wasn't a coach that cut me, mm -hmm. wasn't a career ending injury, um, I wasn't terrible at the age of 39. Like I went out on top and that is the way that I wanted to write the ending of my story. And um, yeah, it was an amazing ending. And now, which, which is crazy, kind of being in this retirement phase, um, I feel like I'm living life for the first time, which is wild. Oh, I love it. What's one thing you want to do that you haven't done yet? Oh, I mean, there's just still so many places I want to travel to, but I'm really getting For fun golf. this time. For fun. <laughs> I want to go camping. Mm -hmm. Love camping. You know, I would love to. And all the things you weren't allowed to do. Ski. Ski four wheel run with the bulls see a bear see a bear <laughs> pet a bear <laughs> yeah all the things that i couldn't do i mean i put so many like i was the extreme mm -hmm. you know like you said there's mm -hmm. there's different levels of the way people go about their careers mm -hmm. but i was completely and utterly crazy mm -hmm. everything revolved around soccer you know every thought that i had during the day every thing that went into my body, uh, the sleep, the hydration, the massages, the recovery, literally everything. And so it's weird to actually be done playing and to now be kind of a average human <laughs> or normal human being that it's really hard to work. I mean, it's, it's not hard to work out, but I don't have to work out for a living anymore. Mm -hmm. Carly, us average humans are happy to have you. <laughs> hey, it's a good life, man. I'm, I'm living, living life to the fullest and, uh, I know my, my husband, Brian, is like, this is a lot of fun. Let's do this. Let's You're play some golf together. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Well, it looks like this fire is about to die. So I hope you enjoyed this episode with Carly Lloyd. So click the link below to subscribe and join us for more Campfire Combos.